The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us pray together. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, in the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Now, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in a group of travelers, they went a day's journey, and then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a Christmas man. You got the me go to work. <laughs> For any of you watching on Facebook, sorry about Christmas Eve, but technology, that's how it works. Or does it? Or does it? Yeah. So, but for those of you with us, glad you can join us this morning um, for our post celebration Christmas. So, I, this is one of the few gospel stories, one of the few stories in scripture about Jesus when he's not a baby or an adult. Uh, there's not many of them. Uh, I'm trying to think of the others, but I can't think of any others. I think this is the only one, and it's the preteen driving his parents crazy Jesus. Um, and it just, I mean, Mary and Joseph, my gosh, we've lost the Savior of the world. What happened to him? Which, from the parents' perspective, you can see that would be troublesome. But from the bigger picture of who Jesus is as God in the flesh, as the Messiah, is, is he really going to get lost? I mean, he's God. He's not getting lost and doesn't need human protection. Um, and perhaps that is the stress and the anxiety that they felt was a combination of that parental care and love for their son, but also wondering, have we messed this up completely for everybody because God sent his son and now we've lost him. What's going to happen to us? We imagine. But Jesus' response is very measured and very matter of fact. It's like, why, why are you looking for me? The divine nature and character of Jesus sort of coming through in that statement of, why are you looking for me? Where else would I be but in my father's house? And his parents' response was, well, not response, but they're, they were confused by that. It's like, what did he mean by all of that? And this is, this is the, the miracle of Christ's birth, of who he was, human form and who he was as divine, as almighty God, and, and the confusion that sort of exists in that. It's not something that any of us can understand or will ever be able to understand. How can, how can a, a child, an infant, a 12-year-old, an adult, a man hanging on a cross be human and die a human death, but again at the same time as a result of that human death, save the souls of the lives of every human being that will ever live. It absolutely doesn't make sense. It is unintelligible, and our brains just don't have the capacity to understand it. And this is where faith comes into our world. This is where faith comes in to our understanding to have to, to believe that because we believe it's true. Not because we want to believe because we hope that it's true, but because God gives us a faith to believe that it is actually true, even if we can't explain it. If someone were able to ever come to you, come up to you and say, how can, you know, how can this Jesus have been 
all man and all God at the same time? If you have an answer for that, please let me know. I would like to hear that answer because I, there is no explanation for it. But this is sort of the tension that we live with in our world. There's the normal, everyday, ordinary part of Jesus. And you see that ordinary in the story of a 12-year-old boy who has abandoned his parents, not because he was being a precocious 12-year-old, but because he had to be in his father's house. He had to be among the people and at an early age proved to the, the wise old men who were there in that temple that he was smarter than all of them, that he was beyond just a human boy and there was something extraordinary about him, something extraordinary about who he is, who he was and who he will always be. And it is to me uh, just kind of evidence of the two worlds that I speak about often that we live in, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of earth, and how they coexist or don't, often living in conflict, and how we balance our lives living in both of those kingdoms. Christmas is over, or is it? Does Christmas really ever end? Does the gift of Christmas meaning of Christmas. It certainly doesn't ever go away. We turn the page on December 25th on our calendars. Not that you have a calendar that has, I guess you might, you might have a calendar that has one of those one day on one page, right? You rip that one off and it's December 26th and for some of us we're like, so glad that's all over. <laughs> now if I can just get through New Year's, we can get back to, you know, the ordinary life. Just get back to doing the stuff that I always do. Get back to my routine. Maybe you're a person like me who loves routine. Same thing every day. It's, it creates a sort of balance for us and a sort of normality to us that we can survive in the chaos of this weary world sometimes. But Christmas doesn't end. December 26th comes and goes, and the 27th, and the 28th, and January 5th, and March 12th, and June 16th, and September 9th, Christmas is overlaying all of those things. The extraordinary always existing within the ordinary parts of our lives. But we too often focus on the ordinary, the earthly kingdom, and the things that we have to do in that earthly kingdom to exist, to maintain a life, to maintain a household, or pay our bills or to buy groceries or whatever it is that we have to do to remain in some sense of normalcy in our lives. And it's easy to forget the extraordinary, the extraordinary life of the Christ child and what Jesus did and meant and all of those things. It's always there, just as God has always been present in our world as <clears throat> God often has told people in the past, in the Old Testament, and as he told us once and for all in Emmanuel, that he is and always will be with us. Whether you perceive it, experience it, acknowledge it, understand it, are aware of it, or having it impact your life, that is one of the extraordinary things about the gift of Christmas. Is it doesn't depend on us for it to be a reality, for it to be true. But if we're going to have things like hope and peace and joy and experience God's love, we have to find ways in our lives to bring that into our ordinary, to bring that into being a part of our day-to-day -day lives. And once a week we have an opportunity that's sort of a public forum of sitting in this place and, and hearing the story of the gospel over and over again because we need that. I need that. I, I loved being in worship before I was the person who was doing the worshiping stuff because I needed to be reminded of the extraordinary because the other six days of my ordinary life were sometimes difficult and chaotic. It was weary. You know, the song, uh, O Holy Night, a weary world rejoices at the birth of Christ. It's a reality 
hard sometimes. It's not always unicorns and rainbows, but we need to find ways in our daily lives to bring the extraordinary in, just to sometimes get a breath, to have a breather, to have a moment of peace or joy or hope in the plain and ordinary times and under the difficult circumstances and especially when things are growing great to give thanks to the one who's the source of it all. And that's something that I, I'm not obliged to do it as a pastor. And when I speak of those things, those disciplines of prayer and scripture and study and service and contemplation and meditation and silence and so many other spiritual disciplines, I don't do it because, I do it as a, as a way of encouragement for you all because I do those things in my life and it works. And it works for me. And it's worked for so many other people that I know. And it's hard to believe that that may be the case, but until you try it and are consistent with it, life just is bleh. It's ordinary. And then once Christmas is over, you got 364 more days until you get to celebrate it again and go through all the drudgery and all of the just busyness and all of the, uh, is it going to be over soon? Feelings that can often accompany this season. I get it. I just went through all of that with, like many of you did through Christmas and after finishing all the dishes last night from dinner and cleaning <laughs> everything up and clearing the table and taking the trash out and I just like crashed on the couch like, ah, finally. That's the ordinary. But then again, reminded this morning of the extraordinary. And that Christmas doesn't end. Christmas doesn't go away. Christmas isn't over at the stroke of midnight on December 25th. But that gift, that gift that laid in a feeding trough in a stable is always present, is ever present. Because of God, it's our Emmanuel. Merry Christmas to you all, today and tomorrow, and the next day, six months from now, nine months from now, and on November 3rd and October 12th, and the rest of the days of your lives. Merry Christmas to you all. Are we done standing, or do we want to stand and sing more songs? Let's sit. Bernie wants to sit. Bernie's choice. Let's blame it on her. I was the one that said it. Have I had the option to sit and play guitar? Sure. There's a school. And I'm already standing. By the way, speaking of which, uh, I'm not sure if any of you paid attention to the uh, graphic that we had during the prelude. It took me a while to realize that that was. 12 year old Jesus with his hand up asking questions. And it's one of those images you don't normally see. You see little infant yeah. Jesus, and you see long haired, bearded Jesus. You don't see scraggly haired teenage Jesus. <laughs> Probably the fact that you didn't put it maybe. in. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, unless you just. Maybe he had perfect skin. Who knows? I could photoshop. I'm trying to grow a mustache 12 year old. Peach fuzz there. We were not asked what questions he was asking the, the priest. How did your beard look so good? <laughs> so probably not. Was already there yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Confirmation question. <laughs>
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Blessed or merciful God, receive our prayer. No, or we'll do that one instead. Hear us, okay? <laughs> you come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation that we live in service to you and the natural world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. <clears throat> Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. And you come to us through people whom the world forgets, poor shepherds and imprisoned Paul announce your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any other need. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without, per without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. And we pray prayers of intercession, God, for the people in our lives, the people who are on our prayer list, for those who have medical needs or who are struggling with loneliness or grief, sadness, being anything but perfectly whole, God. And that includes all of us. And we lift up to you the prayers of those on our hearts and our silently now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us through those who have died, yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon and martyr who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. Turn and share God's peace with one another.
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples. He took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When they had finished the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. Remembering Jesus in the bread and the wine, let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And as you are able to receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. 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 Now, since it happens? Yeah. Sure. Let's see. Or stay, keep standing. We're going to be great. Yeah. You purchased a poinsettia. Feel free to take it home with you. Yeah. If you didn't, I think we still have extras. If you really want a poinsettia to take home and kill, feel free. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going to happen. To uh, we're going to have our good gifts tree up for probably another Sunday, just in case you haven't um, wanted to still contribute to the good gifts. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. It's uh, Happy New Year almost, because we won't see each other again until 2022. Yeah. Yes. Bible study, or are not gonna we're going to do Bible study this week. Yeah. yeah. So. And also, if you um, want to contribute in this year, Ken and I are counting on Wednesday, so it would be helpful for us and for the Treasury <laughs> yeah. if you have extra money that you want to somehow unload on us, we would be glad to do <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you got some stuff in your Christmas envelopes. Yeah, <laughs> but Wednesday morning we are counting money and then to the bank, so hopefully.
our final count of the year. Okay, all right. We've been doing it, we've had no words on the board yet, but now we're gonna have the words on the board. <laughs>